I want to talk about the dark side of spiritual awakening. And I don't mean dark as in evil, I mean dark in terms of our emotional, psychological state. The kinds of emotions that keep us clouded and darken our perception. Feelings of frustration and anger, depression, loneliness, and so on. A state of spiritual desolation and disillusionment, of discouragement, of hopelessness and helplessness. What John of the Cross referred to as the dark night of the soul. Because it's a very common occurrence that when one begins to awaken, either these feelings begin to emerge from seemingly nowhere, or if we had already previously experienced them before, that these feelings tend to intensify. And this can be very confusing and perplexing because we tend to imagine spiritual awakening as being a very blissful experience. At least that's how it tends to be presented. And so when we're experiencing instead these deeply disturbing emotions, this overwhelming heaviness and despair, it's not uncommon to think that maybe we're doing it wrong or maybe there's something wrong with us personally. And of course, these kinds of thoughts tend to just make us all the more miserable. But this is actually a very common and normal experience, and there is a clear reasoning behind all of this, as well as a way out of it, all of which we'll explore. We tend to have this idea that spiritual awakening is this instantaneous event in which one is deeply asleep, meaning that they're unconscious, mechanical, conditioned, deluded, in a sort of hypnotic trance. And then all of a sudden, they just snap out of it. They just spontaneously wake up. They go directly from being deeply asleep to fully awake in a single instant. And it may happen like this for some people, but for the vast majority of us, spiritual awakening is a gradual process which can occur over a long period of time. It can be many years or even lifetimes. And it really just depends on our own awareness, on our willingness to surrender and allow it to unfold of itself. And I've talked about this in other videos, so I'm not going to go into any detail here. But as we find ourselves waking up, we begin to become much more aware of the world around us and everything that's going on. In fact, one of the greatest catalysts for spiritual awakening is the very state of the world in which we find ourselves. All the chaos and destruction, all the war and corruption, all the injustice and so on. And there simply comes a point at which you can no longer ignore it or delude yourself your eyes have opened and it can't be unseen. And so it may be that you find yourself confronted by all of this, as well as all kinds of insane social and cultural beliefs and behaviors, by all the superficiality and pretentiousness, the hypocrisy and selfishness of the vast majority of people around you, by the very meaninglessness of materialistic pursuits and so on and you become disillusioned by all of it, which is wonderful, by the way. But it may not feel wonderful in the beginning. In fact, it may often feel frustrating and overwhelming, as well as deeply depressing. And this is all very normal to feel like this. It's a very healthy reaction to a very unhealthy society. We think that because we feel this way, that perhaps there's something not quite right with us. But think of it like this. If you're walking down the street one day and you find someone lying there who is in pain, perhaps even dying, how would you feel in that situation? What would you do? If you didn't feel anything at all, if you just shrugged your shoulders and kept going about your day, not even thinking about it, then perhaps there is something not right with you. Because most of us would find ourselves in that situation feeling a deep sense of empathy for that person. We would feel the urge to want to do something to help them. But supposing the situation was such that we could think of nothing that we could do to help, 
for whatever the reason. Perhaps the situation is too far beyond our control, or it seems too late to offer anything of real significance that could fix it or change it. Or we try to offer assistance, but the person declines, refusing even to listen, even to acknowledge the gravity of their situation. And that, in and of itself, might cause us to feel deeply frustrated, to feel helpless and powerless. Because we want to help, but it feels like it's not in our power to actually do anything. So when we begin to wake up to the state of the world, to all the destruction and injustice, to all the suffering of so many countless other living beings, is it not reasonable to experience a deep sense of empathy coupled with a sense of feeling overwhelmed, of looking at the immensity of all of this and feeling this desire deep within to want to do something, to help in some way, and yet there's so much to be addressed and it's so widespread and seems to be so far beyond our control and we wouldn't even know where to begin or whether anything we do would make any significant difference at all just to feel empathy for all the suffering in the world is alone enough to cause a great disturbance in us but add to that the frustration of wanting to change it and yet feeling powerless to do so to feel helpless to help the situation. That can feel utterly hopeless. And all of this combined together within us can cause us to feel a deep sense of despair. So again, what I'm getting at here is that this feeling of depression is not necessarily an indication that there is something wrong with us. It may be that there are areas within ourselves, within our way of thinking and so on, which may be contributing to that feeling personal issues, attachments, illusions, insecurities, and so on, which need to be addressed and resolved. But it may also be an indication that something is deeply right with us. It may be partly rooted in a deep sense of connection and compassion for all living beings and the sincere desire to serve, to help, to assist, and to heal the world. But when we look around us at everything that's going on in the world, and we look to one another, we might find that those around us seem not to see the urgency in it, if they even see it at all. It can often feel as if we're the only one who sees the madness, and who feels that sincere desire to do something about it. It may be that we find ourselves among others who seem to be deeply asleep to all of this and who are blindly contributing to it in a number of ways or simply don't seem to care. And so we may find ourselves feeling very much alone in our awakening, perhaps even isolated and alienated. It may feel as though we have woken up one day to the realization that the place where we've been living all this time is actually an insane asylum. And we're the only one with any tinge of sanity. Even those in charge, the doctors and nurses, are all insane. In fact, they may be just as deluded, if not more, than all the other patients. And because insanity is the norm, it is your sanity, your clarity, your rationality, and so on, which seems to them to be insane. As far as anyone else can discern, you're the only one who's crazy. And being that they far outnumber you, you may even begin to question it yourself at times. You may wonder if perhaps you really are going insane. But the reality may simply be that you're the only one who's waking up from the insanity. We may find that we have lost interest in the things which used to interest us, which we now see as meaningless or superficial, and so we find it difficult to maintain our social relationships or form new ones, because most people only seem interested in these superficial and trivial things. And if we try to talk to anyone about the state of the world as we now see it, many people would rather not have that conversation. If we try to talk to them about the meaninglessness and superficiality of this materialistic society, many people would rather not even think about it. And if we try to share with others our newfound interest in spirituality, 
They might think that we're strange or fanatical or that we've lost touch with reality. They might ridicule or argue, or they may simply be disinterested. And so we may find that we are outgrowing all of our friendships and that no one seems to really understand us, nor really cares to. And with all of this, we may feel a great sense of disconnectedness with those around us, which can feel deeply lonely. And once again, this is all very understandable that we should feel this way. And in feeling isolated and alienated, in feeling overwhelmed by the madness of the world, in feeling powerless because it seems so far beyond our control and that no one else seems to care, and everyone is just throwing fuel into the fire while the world burns, and seeing how people treat one another with hostility or indifference, how they manipulate and exploit one another, how they contribute to the suffering of others due to their own selfish interests and pursuits, due to their insatiable greed. And in seeing all of this, the overwhelming immensity of it, the feeling of isolation and disconnectedness, we can become not merely frustrated, but even outraged and angry. And is it so wrong to feel angry about such things? Is it really so unspiritual? Is it not reasonable to find all of this deeply disturbing? What has really helped me in all of this is to look very closely at these feelings, to go deeply into them, and to understand what is at the root of it, what is underlying all of it. And I can tell you what I've discovered in doing this, but I'll also tell you that it's not enough for you to hear about it from me or from anyone else. You really have to go within and see this for yourself. But what I found in going deeply into my depression, my frustration, my loneliness and so on, was that deep beneath all of this was a yearning to help heal the world. And that yearning itself was rooted in love and compassion and an underlying sense of connection with all living beings. And what was causing me such a great deal of suffering was that all of this seemed to be frustrated, blocked, obscured, inhibited from rising up and being expressed. And so by resolving those blockages, which are nothing more than limiting thoughts and beliefs, and really tapping into that intrinsic connectedness, into that inner sanctum of love and compassion, allowing it to flow forth through whatever expression it wants to take in any given moment, enabled me to release so much of that weight that I was carrying. By simply allowing those heavy feelings to be there, by simply acknowledging them and accepting them, by sitting with them without any sort of resistance, and by simply observing them from a space of awareness, I found that they tend to resolve themselves. And not that they necessarily vanish the very moment that we look at them, but rather they dissolve in proportion to how much awareness we bring to them, how unattached we are, how much we come to understand them simply through our observation. And it may be that these things take some practice, which means that we need to have patience. But the more we learn to surrender and relinquish, letting go more and more each time, and coming into that space of awareness, of deep acceptance here in this present moment, the more we discover that underlying stillness, that sense of peace beneath all the turmoil, which has always been there, but often lies hidden. And it's from that space of stillness and clarity that we are inspired to offer something of real value, something which may contribute to the healing of the planet, to the healing of humanity, perhaps even to the awakening of humanity. But that inspiration doesn't come from overthinking or from thinking at all. It arises naturally and spontaneously from that space of clarity, of pure awareness, when we've gone beyond thinking and into the silence behind it.
when we've let go and surrendered to unknowing and uncertainty. So when it comes to having some sort of positive, lasting impact on the world, our greatest contribution begins with our own awakening, our own inner transformation, with our own inner cultivation of the very things that we feel the world needs. And it may be that we have to forget about the rest of the world for a time, at least in regard to healing it, and instead to focus our attention on healing ourselves. Because unless we heal ourselves, what good are we to anyone else? As selfish as it might appear, we may need to simply focus all of our energy on this, on our own healing, on our own awakening, on learning to love and accept ourselves just as we currently are, to recognize our greatest virtues and to cultivate them, to discover our gifts and to develop them so that we can share them effectively with others when the time comes. We may feel that we need to retreat from the world for a time, to be in solitude, to be alone with ourselves, so that we can do this inner work without distraction. Or we may find that serving others is what helps us to awaken and develop our compassion all the more. And so we may need to throw ourselves into the world, into the chaos, into some sort of service to lose ourselves, that is, our ego self, in the service of others. Or it may be some balance of the two, of being active in the world one moment and being in solitude the next. Or it may be something altogether different. I really can't say because we're all different in as far as where we are on our own individual journeys and as far as our own temperaments, our own inclinations and so on. And so there's not one formula that works best for everyone. You have to figure out what works best for you. But whatever it happens to be to give yourself fully to that process. Understand that this awakening is often a gradual process of learning how to let go more and more. Of gradually releasing our illusions as we come to face them of settling into that space of silence and stillness deep within and learning how to gently bring our attention back to that space whenever we find ourselves carried off by the currents of distraction. And all of this requires practice and patience. But in the meantime, whatever suffering we're experiencing, whatever darkness, whatever discomfort, whether depression or loneliness or whatever it happens to be, to simply acknowledge that, to accept it, and to allow it to be there. Not to resist it, not to fight against it, but to simply be in that space without being attached or identified with it. But more importantly, to understand that this is all very natural, that we should feel this way, and not to condemn ourselves for it, but to treat ourselves with love and compassion, with patience and understanding. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.